quick artist tip coming at you. I'm going to show you a real quick way to get really nice crisp lines when you're using art tape on canvas. And if you like art tips, don't forget to follow me and follow my Instagram. Place the tape down and grab a soft bristled brush. Cover the canvas with matte varnish. Put your painting on top and enjoy those nice crisp lines when you pull the tape off. Don't throw out your old art pens. Here's why. When you first buy fine liner pens, the color's really vivid and crisp, but after you use them for a while, it can get kind of dull and muddy. But don't throw them out just yet. Hang on. Eventually they fade enough so that you can get really light and dark shades depending on how hard you press. And you can use this to shade your line art, making things like this, or this, or even this. So when they start to run out... Let's steal some art. Well, it's not really stealing. Story time. In 2017, the Met made all images of public domain works in its collection available under the Creative Commons Zero license. That means any of us can use, share, remix any of these artworks without restriction, including commercially. When searching, you just want to make sure that you're still within the open access collection. Just the other day I found these awesome cards I wanted to turn into a poster design, and with a little bit of tracing and some color magic, we have a modern take on an 1800s playing card. How cool is that? Down south, hood baby, hood baby, make all the girls go crazy. Go, go, go stupid, she's smart like an A plus student. Up, down, right down, looking for your love right now. Here's how I annotate my A-level art sketchbook. So I start by typing out my notes and sort of curating ideas from the artists that I'm using. I then cut them out and just arrange them on the page. I think typing your notes just saves so much time. I then just stick them in a kind of arrangement just so I can sort of write my own words around them as well. And by my own words I mean like words in pen, not printed out. I then just draw some lines and write my notes. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I don't really have like a set layout or a set background. I never do backgrounds, you shouldn't do them, they just waste so much time. So what you need to actually put in your annotations is really dependent on what you're doing. Generally, you should just say who or what the painting is of, the medium you did it in, how it relates to your theme and your artist, whether you like it or dislike it, and also how you're going to improve for next time and how this is going to further your project. And this can literally just be a sentence each. So yeah, it's nothing too much, this is literally just how I annotate all my pages, and I think it just works really well. My blending tips. First sketch your outline. Then lightly block in your first layer of color. Focus on the lights and darks. Slowly increase the pressure. Keep layering until you can't see the paper underneath. Use a white pencil to help blend them together. And a white pen for the tiny highlights. color and depth to your shading. First I'm going to show you how you might normally shade something. I'm taking a darker shade of this apple so it's a dark red for the shadow. For lighting I'm just going to lighten the red a little bit, show you where the light's hitting. Now this doesn't look bad but we can definitely up the game a little bit. This time I'm going to darken the shade but I'm also changing the hue a little bit. Here you can see the shadow is a deep purple in color. And if you look at objects in real life, you can see that there are multiple colors in shadow, so I'm even adding a little bit more purple. For lighting, it's always a good idea to look at your light source. We have the sun here, so I'm just going to lighten the shade, and I'm going to change the hue, so it's more of a golden color rather than just a light red. 
Now, this is a technique I learned in painting, but it's something you can use for your digital or your traditional art. Never be afraid to play with color. <laughs> I was hanging with you and then I realized I didn't think it was true. I was surprised when I found out I'd fallen for you. Hey guys, here are four techniques to improve your art immensely. So first, just draw some lines, build up muscle memory. Next, draw some squares and draw circles in them. It is much harder than it looks. Then do the same thing, but in perspective with the horizon line and line shooting out. And next, I don't really know where I got this from, but draw cubes and stuff at different angles at different perspectives. So one's at the horizon line above and below. Here's five common anatomy mistakes. Number one, completely forgetting about the forehead. We can't ignore this any longer. It's like you karate chopped a cerebellum. Just remember that the eye is usually in the middle of that guide circle and the mouth is at the bottom. Number two is drawing only with straight lines. Rarely anything on the human body is a straight line. And this is due to the shape of our muscles, which we won't get into right now. Number three, Oof, drawing the smile with all the teeth. It is 110% unnecessary, just look at it. You can leave some space and it'll look amazing. Number four, drawing little hills for feet. I used to do this too, but a foot has curves in it. It's like a triangular shape. I can't. Number five, drawing the body one part at a time. Draw the form before the details and I promise it'll look 100 times better. Do you have dried up paint brushes that you forgot to wash out? I have so many of these. Actually, I have quite a few. So I decided to try to save them. First, I let them soak into some isopropyl alcohol for about five minutes, and then I switched them over to some warm soapy water. I kept going back and forth between the alcohol and the water until I got them nice and smooth and clean, and I was able to save them. make those rainbows in my mind when I think of you sometime and I want to spend some time with you just the two of us we can make it if we try sketchbook I can definitely recommend to literally anyone who likes drawing and likes using markers. Um, it's the Crescent Render sketchbook. It could take literally anything except for watercolors, unfortunately. I have no idea why, but it just really, really dislikes it. What I love most about the sketchbook is you can put any amount of ink on it, no matter what it is, and it'll just stay. You can put Sharpie on it, you can put Copics, you can put Prismacolors, like literally anything. It will take it and it will never transfer to the other side. You don't even have to use a piece of paper, goddamn. Look at that shit, beautiful. Here's one shape I learned that changed my art. Draw two squiggles that come to a point. Then just continue it from the inside and repeat the pattern. You can use this technique for grass, hair, ribbons, bandages, and even horns. You can shade roughly or take a fancier approach. This is my foreshore art block cure. All you have to do is paint simple shapes, then ink right on top of them. Don't think about it. Just draw, let the juices flow. If you do this, please do at me and show me what you did. I'm really excited to see what you guys do.